Okay, so what I'm going to go over in this tutorial is how to use Revit's in-place mass. <clears throat> now, we use in-place mass whenever we want to create something custom to the house um, or to the building. And something, typically something that where we need to reference the building itself. Okay, so for example, what we're going to be working on is building this bookcase that is placed underneath the staircase. And in this situation, I would need, I need to reference the angle or the slope of the staircase because this bookcase has to line up and match the, um, the slope of the stairs. So this is a situation where we need to reference the actual, the actual model itself. Um, working in in-place mass or using the in-place mass is very similar as creating families. But again, families are kind of standalone pieces where we could always plug and play, throw into a model, adjust. We can play with the parameters, make it larger, make it smaller, right? Doing all of those things. An in-place mass is similar in the sense that it's a three-dimensional object that we're creating, but the in-place mass works as a kind of one-off, right? This is the only situation where I will create this staircase or this bookcase that is custom to this one staircase. Right now, <clears throat> before we jump into this, I want to give kind of a, a warning here. Everyone who uses Revit um, understands that Revit's strength, and it's a very powerful software, but its strength really lies in its ability to model conventional modular um, structures um, or modular um, buildings using very kind of traditional forms of construction. Where Revit really struggles is in its customization. So whenever we want to actually customize something or do something that is um, unordinary, that's where Revit is a bit clunky, okay? And it's not to say that there aren't any tools um, and that you can't do it in Revit. It's just not as streamlined and as efficient as, um, as it is when working on kind of the conventional modular type of stuff. Okay. And I give you a heads up just because we're going to jump into kind of the customization within Revit, and it can be a little clunky um, at times. So if you experience that, don't worry, don't freak out, don't stress out, don't say, well, this isn't for me, I, I can't do this, just kind of power through it. It's, it's a bit clunky because you're kind of having to learn a new language, um, Revit's kind of workflow or the way we mo we customize within Revit, the workflow is a bit different in the in-place mass than it is, than it has been using um, the software itself. Um, so as long as you you begin to learn that language, you'll eventually get it. Okay. Um, it's not hard. It's actually very simple. There's not a whole lot of commands um, within the in-place massing. It's just trying to understand the logic and the workflow. Once you get that. In place massing is going to be um, a lot easier and it'll even be fun. Okay. So we're going to jump into it. Before we do that, though, let me just explain the workflow in creating this. <clears throat> if you remember when creating families, we had that option of creating form, right? And it was essentially creating a series of extrusions and a series of voids. And that's all it really is. So the way we construct this is going to be to create this triangular shape as a solid, as one solid object, and then create these individual cubicles or these boxes as voids and then push the voids in and extrude um, or just kind of carve from the triangular geometry. Okay, Sounds simple. It kind of is, but it's also a little time consuming. So let's jump right into it. Before we click on the in-place mass, you want to set your drawings up. So you're going to need a 3D view, ideally with the section box turned on, because we want to be able to um, move around. So let's go ahead and in your properties box, turn on your section box. Let me get it out of this realistic. Let's get to go to shaded. And let's come around here. Okay, so I have the section box turned on. I'm going to cut the building so that I could actually see the area that I'm working in. 
Okay. Now we're not going to be doing a whole lot of modeling in the 3D view. We are going to reference it from time to time. Um, but the 3D view is going to be really helpful to understand what it is we're constructing. Okay. And then you're, we're also going to find typically a section. If it's an, if you're going to be building this on the exterior side, then do an elevation. But we need to be able to see what we're referencing. So like the staircase. And a lot of the modeling is going to happen in a 2D view. So find what that view is, where that where that area is. What I ended up doing was just cutting a section. Actually, I ended up moving my section that I had over here, moving it over here to this side. Um, so that when I go to the section view, I get a straight um, view of the area that I'm going to be working in. Okay? This could also be done in a first floor or in a floor plan view. Um, depending on the object that you're creating, okay? So let's go to the section view. Now, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and select my in-place mass and delete it because we're going to recreate it, okay? So now with those two views in place, we're going to go up to Massing in Sight and then click In-Place Mass. And then it's going to ask us to name this mass. So I'm going to call this um under stair bookcase i don't know i think bookcase is actually one word i'm an architecture major not an english okay so now <clears throat> we go into sketch mode but sketch mode looks a little bit different it, it's actually our families tab okay so when we created the doors and the um, table families, it's going to look a lot similar to, to that, except in this one, we're not going to be adding parameters like the way we did with the doors and, and the tables. As a side note as well, if you have not completed or watched the doors and the tables families, then I recommend going back and watching that and learning that because it's going to make in-place massing so much easier. And I'll probably gloss over um, things that we've already covered in those lectures as well. Okay, so I mentioned that the first thing we're going to do is build that triangle. So using the line tools, okay, actually, I take that back. Before we could actually um, draw, we have to tell Revit which plane do we want to draw on, okay? Although this area here is a 2D drawing, right? We're in the section mode. Well, this is a 2D drawing. There's actually depth to this, right? Like the staircase, the stringer here is farther in front than the wall is. So we have to tell Revit, well, you know, which plane do we want to draw on? Okay. And we do that by specifying, um, by setting our work plane. Okay. So right up here, we have set work plane. So I'll click set work plane. And it's a matter of just kind of hovering over on the edge of the work plane we want to draw on. So I'm trying to draw on the wall, okay? Not on the stringer or anywhere else. But it's not, you don't place the cursor on the actual surface. You have to place it on the edge of the surface. So I have to be careful not to accidentally select, say, the floor, okay? I'm hovering over and take a look What's kind of telling me, giving me the sign that this is the actual wall is right up here. It's also selecting the window and it's selecting, I'm seeing this area highlighted as well. Okay, so make sure you really zoom out and that's gonna help you to understand um, what it is you're selecting. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that surface. Okay, make sure that show is selected because what you notice is that it now turned kind of like this dark blue that means that I've selected that wall. So if you click and the thing that you wanted is not blue, something else is, then hit the escape key and try again. So now that's set, but we set it in the 3D view, we're gonna have to, it's easier to set it in 3D view than go into the 2D view, right? I mentioned it was a little clunky. Let's go and reset it again. And now it's asking us to pick a plane. So I'll hit pick a plane, I'll hit okay, now I could try to pick it here as well, but it's a lot, it's gonna be a lot, lot harder 
um, because there's so many additional lines and Reddit really doesn't understand which one is what we're selecting. So I'm just going to go back to 3D view and click on the plane. And because we had already selected it, it's going to jump right to that plane. So I'll click. And now it's asking us, okay, which view do you want to go view this in? I'm going to hit open view. And now in my section view, it's blue, okay? Which is what we want. That tells me that um, I can go ahead and start drawing and it's going to draw on this plane. So from here, we have to create, remember it's really, with in-place masking, it's really about extrusions and voids, solids and cutouts. That's how we create everything. So I'm going to create the solid first of that triangle. I'm going to actually, well, let's just the line two. I could also use pick lines. Let's do that since I've talked since I'm talking about it. We'll click on pick lines and we could go ahead and select the line we want. And so now we have a line there. And then I'll follow that up with just a regular line. And I'm gonna come click there. I'm going to come straight down and then across. Okay. And when I'm done, I'll hit the escape key or I could also hit the enter key. Now, you'll notice that this line does um, go past my, my vertical line. So I'm going to hit the trim extents, TR, and just click there to close this off. Okay. Now, once we have these three lines in place, I'm going to go ahead and extrude this out. But let's do that in the 3D view. So typically, all of the drawing is going to happen on a 2D, 2D view. And then once we start extruding or cutting voids, that's going to happen in the 3D view. That's why it's really important to have that 3D view. So make sure that your triangle or the shape is selected. And then we're going to have the option up at the top that says Create Form. Click on the pull down, And we're going to select Solid Form. Okay. Now it's going to kind of give you a random number. Um, or it's going, sorry, it's gonna, it's going to extrude somewhat of a random number. Um, every time I do this, I get a different um, distance. But what I typically will do is I'll move this back in place, kind of close to where I want it. Not exact because I'm not eyeballing it. But the problem is notice that I'm getting two dimensions. I'm getting two temporary dimensions. Okay, it sometimes done, does that. And then once we start trying to play with the temporary dimensions, once you have two dimensions, you're kind of, it starts moving back and forth in ways you probably don't want it to. So it's a lot easier and easier to manage when you get a lot closer to what you want. And then you can actually select the temporary dimension that you want, okay? Now I'm going to say that this bookcase is I don't know, 18 inches. 18 inches is pretty deep for a bookcase, but for the sake of this tutorial, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to click on that temporary dimension, just type in 18 inches. And now we have this mass. Okay. Now the next step is to do the cutouts. Okay. Um, to do the cutouts, of all of the individual cubicles. So we're going to have to do a lot of 2D drawing on this. Okay? Um, I'm going to offset along all around the border about an inch and a half. I'm going to break this up into three sections. And then I'll add the three quarter inch planks, which are going to be the thing that holds the books. Okay? The other thing too is that notice how we come straight out I mean, this is all unusable space for a bookcase. So I'm actually going to start about three feet um, in height is when the bookcase is going to, to start, okay? Now, the other thing to note is that these in-place massings are, they're not as exact as the rest of Revit is. So it's more of a visual than it is anything else, okay? Okay, so we've created the mass. It's now time to, what I'm going to do, since I'm going to do the extrusion, I'm going to want to draw on this surface. Okay, not the wall surface, but the face of this extrusion. So I'm going to have to reset that. Okay, make sure that you're always setting the work plane first before you start drawing or modeling. So I'll click set. 
We'll select that. Now that's blue. Let's go to our section. We'll do the same thing, set. Let's say pick a plane. We'll hit OK. Let's go back to our 3D view and pick this plane again, and then click on section, open view. And now that's blue. So that tells me that I can go ahead and start. Um, I can go ahead and start um, drawing. Okay. Now <clears throat> we're going to start with, you know, we have our line tools here, but a really good tool um, that we typically don't use, um, especially in Revit quite often, is our, our reference lines. Okay, so reference lines are going to be really useful here because they're kind of imaginary lines that are not permanent, um, and they're really easy to just select and delete without having to actually go in and, and draw um, using our line tools. Okay, so let's keep that in... Um, Let's keep that in the back of our minds for the moment. Right now, what I'm going to do is draw the outline of my one and a half. And I'm going to do that by using, sorry, our line tool. Okay. But if I want this to be one, one inch and a half, I am going to set an offset. Okay. So we'll change the offset to one and a half. And then I'm just going to go all the way around. So right now it's starting on the outside. I'll hit the space bar so that it jumps up to the inside. I'm going to click there, click there, and now click there. Okay. Now the next thing is the boundary. Okay, so this is three feet. Now I don't know where three feet is. Okay. The only way that I kind of figured this out is by just drawing a line that goes up three feet. Doesn't matter where. Okay, so I'll type in three feet. And then I just cut across. Make sure that that's straight. Uh oh, I still had offset. Let me undo that. So control Z. I should have picked up on that. So let's draw the line again. And since we're starting over, I don't have that offset. So let's make sure I'm clicking correctly. We'll go straight up three feet and then cut across. Okay. Hit the escape key once I'm done. So now at this intersection point, that's how I know that I'm at three. That's where my three foot mark is. So we'll draw the line and we're going to go straight down. There we have it. Now I don't need this, so we could delete that. There you go. And now I'll use the trim extents to clean this area up. Click there and click there. Okay. So now I said I'm going to divide this up into three. Now this is another area where Revit's a bit clunky. Okay. So I'm going to just kind of draw these lines going up, going up again. Now, typically, with Revit's logic, I can use the dimension tool and dimension, if I can click on the line correctly, this string, and then hit the EQ button to equalize everything. But then that happens, right? So the dimension and using the EQ doesn't really work in the in-place massing, okay? Um, not the way that it's, not the way that it works within Revit. Um, it does work. It didn't make everything equal distance, but what it does is it spaces it outward, and more than anything, it actually um, takes the largest dimension and spaces everything equal to that larger dimension, which is not what we want at all. So I'm going to hit Control Z, okay? Unfortunately, we're going to have to do this the old school way. And that old school way is to take the overall dimension, pull out your calculator, and then divide it into three. Now, when you divide, the way we do this, don't try to divide 10 feet 5 inches by 3. Convert everything to inches. It's going to make your life so much easier. 
So 10 feet, multiply everything by 12. 10 feet times 12 is 120 inches plus another five inches. That means 125 inches. Divide that by three gives us 41.66. At this point, especially when we hit the decimals, and because this is an in-place massing, um, I'm just going to round that to 41 and a half inches. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be exact. At least what we're doing here doesn't have to be exact. Um, if you need it to be exact, there is a way where you can convert the decimal into a fraction. Um, but that's at that point, that's another level. That's a whole other level of math we don't want to get into. So 41 and a half inches. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I could delete this dimension at this point. Let's go ahead and click on this line and then adjust the temporary dimension to go 41 um, and one half inch. Okay. Just three foot five and a half. Let's do the same thing. Now that I know that number, I can go ahead and just easily just change this to three foot five and a half. Okay. All right. Now that's the spacing. But there's a thickness inside here. And so there needs to be a one and a half inch spacing because I'm going to follow this one and a half inch profile. So that means this line needs to offset three quarters and three quarters that way. Three quarters plus three quarters is one and a half. So we're going to use the offset tool. And I'm going to offset, not seven feet, three quarters. Okay. I'm going to offset there. And then we're going to offset to that side and do the same thing over here and right there. Okay. I also want to make sure that notice that this line isn't hitting. So we're just going to click and bring this up. It doesn't matter if it's um, if it's overlapping because we're going to trim all this stuff anyways. And once I've done the um, offset, I can go ahead and delete that middle line. Okay. So we'll do the same thing over here on this side and bring this up. OK. Now we get to the reference planes, OK? We've gotten to this far, this place. All right, we haven't done any extrusions just yet, um, but we have the individual kind of bays. Now we have to do the, the, um, the shells. And we have to model and we have to cut do the um the formwork to cut out for each individual shell. And this is where it's going to become a little bit tedious. Okay. I'm going to walk you through how I do it and then I'll pause the recording so you don't have to watch me repeat this 20 times. So I'm going to actually start off with the reference plane. Okay. And I'm doing a reference plane just because we're going to have to draw a whole bunch of lines and we're going to have to space things out. Um and so it's just easier, uh, or it'll just be easier to kind of move things around. So I'll use the reference plane. Now, the one thing that I do um, care about is that there's a shelf at every point where a bay and the angle meet. Now, that's just a design perspective um, or a design aesthetic. It's not a building code or anything, or it doesn't make really make construction that much easier. It's just kind of what I want. So I'm going to draw a reference plane that goes from there to there. Oops, make sure it's straight. Let me undo that. Let me, you know, let me, instead of undoing, let me just delete it. I'll do a reference plane. And we're going to place it right there. And we're going to go straight out. I'll hit the escape key. And then we'll go ahead and place another one right there. Hit the escape key again, and then place another one right there. Oh. Now, the distance between both of these, between these lines, is something like two feet. Right? So if I run the dimension, one foot 11 which is way too big for a bookcase. So I could really bring this down. Um, I could really kind of break, bring this down to a one foot, okay? 
but typically a bookcase, now that I think about it, you do have some bookcases that are larger. So maybe we want to leave the upper areas as, you know, one foot 11 and 16th spacing. Okay. So let's leave these the way that they are, but we'll go ahead and get smaller in this area. Now I just mentioned that the equal dimension doesn't work. Okay. So I need to draw, I'm going to want to draw another shelf right in between here. Okay. So I'm going to have to take this and um, divide it into two since I can't use that equal distance um, dimension kind of trick, which means I have to convert this down to um, divide one and a half, one foot 11 and three quarters inches into two. Um, so, huh. so I do have a little trick. Um, so again, we convert the feet and inches, convert it all to inches. So we have one foot, that's 12 inches plus 11 inches, that's 23 inches. And then we have the fraction. So here's my little trick. When it comes to three fourths, when it comes to either the halves, the fourths or the eighths. Okay, so one half, three fourths, three eighths. Okay, and you have to divide it by two. The trick is that you actually multiply the denominator, which is four, by two, and you leave the numerator the same. So half of three fourths is actually three eighths. So four times two is eight. So um, you leave that the way that it is. So if we had half of, I don't know, 3 8, multiply the 8 times 2 is 16. So that half of 3 8 is actually 3 16. Okay. So that's a little trick when multiplying or when dividing a fraction in halves when it comes to our all of the equal numbers. So 1 half, uh, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 16th, and so on and so on. Okay. That's a very, very useful trick that it took me a while, a while to learn. Um, and that's just the little bonus for actually watching this tutorial up to this point. <laughs> so when we have to divide this, so this is 23 inches, divide that. Now, see, this is going to get complicated. 23 inches, um, that is 11 and a half inches, 11 and a half inches, plus 3 eighths. Good luck. Um, I could do the math. I'm not going to do the math. So let's just leave it at 11 and a half inch inch spacing here. Okay. So let's go ahead and delete this. I'll select that middle one and change the, dim the temporary dimension to 11 and one half. Okay. Now at this point, I know that this line is at three feet because we just drew that line. So I'm actually just going to offset this line one foot. Okay, so I'm gonna have one foot base. So we'll do one foot. And I'm gonna bring that down and bring that down just like that. Okay, so that's going to be the spacing of my bookcase. Now we have to show the thickness, draw the thickness of these shelves which is going to be three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to use the offset tool and we're going to offset this by three quarters of an inch. Okay. So we're going to use the offset tool and now I have the thickness. Okay. <clears throat> Once we have this, I can go ahead and draw the lines. Okay. So Notice, and again, the benefit of these reference planes is notice that I'm able to go through all of them. It's going to make my life a lot easier this way. Okay. So I'm going to use the line tool. And I what I actually like to do is I'll draw one line. And instead of clicking, you notice that this is a two click, it's a click, move, click process. Instead, once I drew one, I could use the copy tool. So C O, select it. And move this over. And now it's just kind of click and move the um 
I could, you know, it's it, it's a few seconds faster, but a few seconds faster here and there makes a whole lot of difference. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw these lines, place these lines. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording for this process so that you don't have to see me draw these lines here. OK, so now I drew all of the lines. Um, it's a little tedious. It took a few minutes, um, but they're all in here. Now what we want to start doing is essentially kind of boxing out all of what's going to be the cutouts, OK? So the 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 um the void cutouts. I no longer need the um the reference planes because I use them to draw my lines. Okay, so I went ahead and deleted them. Now <clears throat> let's start at the bottom. What I'm gonna need to do is use the trim extents to connect these, right? To kind of close all of this off. However, if I use the trim extents, it deletes the entire line, right? And so let's hit cancel there, right? You notice how it delete, deleted that entire line. Um, so we don't want to do that. So instead, what we have to do, more tedious stuff, is split the line into individual little line segments. So I'm going to zoom in there and click that line. And then I'm going to click there. Let's do it for a few of these. Okay. And so on. So I'm just going to do these two here, and I'll also do this one. So you have to work. I always I recommend that you work kind of um, methodically, kind of systematically, because systematically, um, because you can very easily lose track of what you split and what what's split and what's not split. Okay. So right now I just worked on these two because again I don't want to have you watch me split all of these individual lines. Um, but once you split the lines, we'll use the trim extents. And now I could actually break this up since we split the lines at those points there. Okay. And now I have these individual boxes that are going to act as my cutouts. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. At this point, what I'm going to do is split all of my lines at all of these kind of intersection points. And then I'll use my trim extents to cut through them, okay? Or to, to um, join them at the corners. So let me go ahead and pause the recording at that. Um, through. Okay, so I cleaned the drawings up. <clears throat> I do want to mention that when I use the, the um, split tool, you really want to make sure to zoom in where you want to split because you could accidentally um, split the line kind of higher up where than you want it to. Um, so make sure you're zooming in, zooming out, and so on. I did miss, even though I was trying to be um, methodical about it, I still missed about two um, lines to split. So I had to stop the trim extents so I could go back and split that line um, as well. And all in all, this whole thing took me about six to seven minutes of just me click, 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 okay? Um, but that's just how, what it is. All right, so at this point, you could begin to see now that as I'm hovering over the um, boxes, they're actually being highlighted, right? They're, they're highlighted as an actual rectangle. I did not do, I didn't do anything. It's just because all of these lines are touching in a continuous manner without any gaps or spaces that um they're all um that they're being selected as a rectangle okay so i didn't do anything that's just what happens after splitting and trimming um the lines so now that we have them all as individual kind of rectangles or shapes we can now do the extrude um i'm sorry the the, the void so we'll go back to the 3d view remember what i mentioned that the drawings happen on the 2D, but whenever we are doing extrusions or working with the 3D tools, we'll in the 3D. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is select the shape. And then at the top here, where it says create form, I'm going to select void form. Okay. 
And now this turns orange. Okay. And it gives me this, um, it gives me a depth of one foot. Now, sometimes it voids in the opposite direction, right? It'll void in that direction, that, okay? So this is another situation where, again, you use the gumball and you kind of move it in the direction that you want it to, get it kind of close, and then specify the temporary dimension. Now, the depth here is 18 inches, right? That's what we did. Now, I can push this all the way through, actually past 18 inches, since it's only cutting through the object through this massing. And then what we end up seeing is the drywall behind, okay? But if I don't want to see the drywall, maybe I want to see this material or have a backing on this material, which is very common, then I'm going to want to go in, um, not go the full 18 inches. So maybe I'll go, you know, to make our lives easier, we'll go 17 inches. I don't want to have to write fractions every single time. So let's type in 17 inches, okay? And now you can begin to see there be a cutout. So we'll do the same thing over here. We'll click on the shape up at the top. We'll go to void form. And then I have to find, this is, this is the part I always get confused. It takes me a while to find the temporary dimension where I use to adjust. So let's select that. I'm going to type in 17 inches. At this point, what I'm going to do is actually highlight 17 inches and copy this. So control C, okay, so that I could paste it next time. So I'll hit enter. So now it goes in 17 inches. We'll do the same thing over here. So like that shape, we're going to create the form and we'll do, oh, let's go back. Hold on. I think I accidentally select, oh, I divided the path. So let's control Z. I don't want to divide the path. Um, we'll select the shape and then create form, void form. Okay, got to find that. There we go. There's that one foot. And now I'm going to press control V as in Victor, and it's going to paste my 17 inches and enter. Okay, do the same thing. Do this one more time. Oh, nope, not. There's a delay. So let's select it. Void form. And where's that temporary? Right there it is. Control V, 17 inches. So I'll, I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of these. I'll go ahead and pause the recording again at this point and bring you back once it's done. Okay, so I went ahead and I used the um, the void form to knock out all of the kind of the shelves and the spacing inside here. And we're almost done. The last thing is to apply material to it, okay? So I'm going to hover over it on an edge, doesn't matter which one, and then I'll hit the tab key on the keyboard several times until the entire object is selected. There we go. So make sure that it's the entire object, not just the face. If you noticed right now, where did it go? There we go. So the entire object is selected. We'll click on it once it is selected. And then over here under the materials, we'll go ahead and click on by category. And by clicking inside there, we get these three dots. So I'll click on the three dots. And then I'm going to apply material. Um, Let's see, what am I? Let's make this out of wood. So let's see what wood options we have. We have cherry, oak, white oak. Everyone's doing white oak right now. So let's go with white oak. I'll hit it. Okay. And there we have it. At this point, we'll go ahead and finally hit finish mass. And this is going to finalize it, and it's going to take us back into um, back into Revit. We haven't saved it in a while, so let's save the project. And although we don't, although it doesn't look like white oak, it's because we don't have the realistic 
um, rendering on, but there, that is what it'll going to end up looking like. Okay. So that's how we use the in place mass um, commands or the command. Again, it's really just to customize something um, using the reference or referencing the building one way or another. The workflow is always to set your work plane first, right? We set our work plane first, and then um, we start using the draw tools. And it's really just a matter um, between creating solid, so like, you know, extrusions or voids. So you create the object using solids and voids, and that's how you need to begin to look at some of the, the, um, the objects. Okay. Again, this is just a bookshelf. Hopefully with this tutorial, it kind of gives you the workflow on how to use in-place massing so that you can begin to customize your own objects inside Revit. Okay. Good luck, everyone.